My name is Eva Ritzel, and I'm an Associate Professor of Neurology and Anesthesia and Critical Care Medicine at Johns Hopkins University. I'm also the Director of Continuous EG and IOM at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to present today, and I will talk to you about simplified montages for EEG and continuous EEG in the ICU. I will start by saying that every EEG is only as good as its montage, and I will explain more about this in this talk. I have no disclosures that are relevant to this talk, and why I be showing pictures of commercially available uh, EEG recording systems, I do not endorse any brand and will not be mentioning any names. Before we talk about in which montage to record an EEG or to display an EEG in, let's talk about the value of the EEG in the critically ill patient in the ICU. As you know, EEG is the recording of spontaneously produced electrical activity of the brain. And this is achieved completely non-invasively. We take electrodes, we affix them to the scalp, and we record brain activity from there. This allows us a functional assessment of the state of the brain. The EEG is always on, and it has an exceedingly high temporal resolution in the order of milliseconds. We can see whether our patient is awake or asleep, whether there's reactivity when he gets stimulated or she gets stimulated, and whether seizures occur or even brief seizure discharges. All this can be seen second by second. The localizing value of the EEG is not quite as good. Um, the spatial resolution is poor and it's really at the level of the brain lobe. You can say something occurs in the temporal lobe, but you really can't go down to um, a more granular location and certainly not to the order of um, a neuron or something like that. There are inherent limitations in the EEG. There is the blurring effect of the head volume conductor with the brain being round and electrical activity being produced everywhere. There is poor signal to noise ratio because the EEG activity, um, the electrical activity of the brain is very, very small and easily uh, affected by uh, muscle activity or other electrical um, disturbance in the room. There is also attenuation of the small EEG signal by the scalp and by the skull in particular. Um, and the montages used have an effect on how well we can localize where a discharge is coming from um, on the EEG. And I will show you this in the following slides. In order to further consider why the montage um, has an effect on the spatial resolution of the EEG at hand, um, we have to consider that EEG is recorded with a differential amplifier. So that means that the EEG machine records the voltage difference between two inputs. And the inputs are the electrodes placed on the patient's scalp. So you have electrode one, electrode two, both give an input into an amplifier, and then you get one EEG channel out of this. Um, on the right-hand side, you see a schematic of where the electrodes are usually placed um, in a patient who, um, has, or who undergoes an EEG recording. And we place them um, using the 1020 system, which is a system that basically stretches with um, uh, a person's head so that all electrodes are equidistant um, in a 1020 uh, design. The electrodes are labeled, as you probably know, uh, for the lobes, they are over. So F is for frontal, T is for temporal, O is for occipital, C is for central, P is for parietal. The um, odd numbered electrodes are on the left side and the even numbered electrodes are on the right side. Now consider if you have a montage that links all these electrodes that are typically placed in a typical 1020 uh, recording um, going from one electrode right to the next, for example, here from F3 to C3. You are obviously getting a channel that looks at a smaller part of the brain then when you are connecting electrodes that are double distant, so basically 
two electrodes over from each other, like FP2 to C4. Then you really are recording with one channel from a rather large part um, of the head and the brain, and therefore your spatial resolution is um, even less accurate than it uh, already is uh, with the EEG being a um, method with poor spatial resolution. So let's consider further what this means for the spatial resolution of an EEG. Um, keeping in mind, like we said um, before, that uh, EEG is recorded with a differential amplifier. Um, if you have a double banana or longitudinal montage, um, you place all the electrodes in the 1020 system, um, FP1, F7, T3, T5, and O1, and connect each one with the next um, if you are choosing a chain montage, which the um, or a differential montage rather than a referential montage, which the uh, double banana is. Um, on the other hand, if you use a double distance montage, you don't place the electrodes that are not connected. So you get away with fewer electrodes on the patient's head, but you also have fewer electrodes to connect. So you would connect FP1 with T3 and T3 with O1. So what that means, of course, is that um, in a double banana montage, you have for the left temporal chain, four channels, FP1 to F7, F7 to T3, T3 to T5, T5 to O1, versus in the double distance montage, you only have uh, for the temporal chain on the left, two channels, FP1 to T3 and T3 to O1. So that, of course, means that you're evaluating the entire left anterior quadrant with only two channels and the entire left posterior quadrant with only two channels versus four channels for the anterior and four channels for the posterior quadrant in a regular longitudinal montage. Reduced montages also make uh, remontaging very difficult to impossible. If you have a, um, a regular longitudinal montage as depicted, he as depicted here, you don't see um, the labels as well as you did on the previous picture because it's a different diagram. But you again see that you have four channels in the left temporal area and so on and so on. You can easily connect them in a different way and get to a transverse montage where you are crossing the midline um, in the electrode chain, the way it is set up. And that is a montage that we like to use if we uh, want to evaluate sleep. Um, the reason this montage is good for sleep is because um, you get a look at the midline since you are crossing the midline with your electrode chain. That's very important. Now, in a reduced montage where you have um, only half the number of electrodes, you skip every other electrode, um, you are limited to the, as we said before, two channels on the left temporal chain, just like two channels on the left parasagittal chain, uh, two channels right temporal chain, uh, two channels right uh, parasagittal chain. And then usually because you want to get a look at the midline, you also uh, make one um, uh, electrode chain going simply across the brain once so that you have a little look at the um, midline um, in this montage coming from left temporal over the midline to right temporal. Um, that is done so that you have in this reduced montage, in this double distance montage, you, you again have a very symmetrical layout of your electrodes. You're skipping every other, and you do get um, a look at the midline, but you can see what a compromise it is because you can't um, look at the different quadrants of the brain in more granular detail, and you cannot really remontage in a very meaningful way. You only have one single way to look um, at your midline. So what we talked about before is um, a montage that uh, was the double distance montage, which is simply just kind of a reduced version of um, a full longitudinal montage. But of course, there are other montages 
um, that are simplified montages as well. So for example, you can have a circumferential montage where you really don't look at your midline at all. You're only connecting a chain um, on the uh, temporal um, side of, uh, of, the, of the head, um, going front to back, again, from FP1, F7, T3, T5, O1. The advantage is that you have some granular detail in the temporal chain, but you have no input from the midline. Um, you can uh, create a central montage where you're really mostly looking at um, electrodes uh, round about the uh, paracentral area with some connection to uh, one temporal electrode, or you can um, actually really weight your montage towards frontal electrodes only. Um, for example, here in a frontal montage, with, re with only um, five electrodes that are connected um, for an EEG. So you see here that um, different um, authors have um, evaluated these montages and looked at how sensitive are they for detecting uh, what they set out to study with the EEG. And um, you see that the emphasis on where the electrodes are placed um, is very different in all of these different montages. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that might be and what different montages might be good for. So now that I've told you about all these limitations and drawbacks um, that you get when you use a simplified montage, so obviously the legitimate question is, why use a simplified montage at all? Well, there are advantages. Um, an, a simplified montage may allow a fast assessment or triaging of a patient who comes in comatose. You get a quick read of the EG. Does the patient need ICU care? Um, are there obvious seizures? Do we need to initiate full continuous EG monitoring with a full montage? So this uh, stratification process can be helpful in the emergency room um, or maybe in a hospital that is uh, where the doctors are wondering, do we need to send this patient to somewhere where they can get uh, a higher level of care? Um, there may also be personnel limitations. Uh, if no EEG techs are available after hours or at all, um, a, a simplified montage can be much more easy to set up for nurses um, or for residents. And there are commercial applications that make that even easier. For example, this um, headband, which is um, the, uh, the headband that will record in the um, uh, uh, circular temporal montage that I showed you and um, maybe a cap that you can just pull over the patient's head and all the electrodes are automatically in the right place. A cap, of course, has the limitation that if there is a head injury or there are drains, then it cannot be used. But it could be um, a good solution for some patients. Um, in general, and even in a hospital, even at, um, at Hopkins where I work, we use the double distance montage when there is limited real estate on the patient's head. Um, when there are bandages, um, shunts or bolts that we have to work around, um, we can still achieve a symmetrical setup with a double distance montage. Or perhaps after a craniectomy when the surgeons want to keep the scalp clean and not have um, too much um, equipment attached directly to the patient's head. So now that we know that a reduced montage or a simplified montage can be useful, um, let's consider how we choose which montage we want to use. Indications for the EEG matter here. Um, if the patient has altered mental status, we want to rule out seizures. So seizures can be very focal. We may want to use more electrodes rather than fewer electrodes. Where do we want to apply them? Well, the temporal lobes might be good for um, a patient in which we're looking for seizures because the temporal lobes are a frequent source of seizures. Um, and um, we you know, might want to use a headband montage. In a post-anoxic patient or an ECMO patient where we want to guide prognosis, we're looking really at what is the brain overall doing. Uh, we're looking at global brain function. Um, and perhaps in a post-anoxic state, um, we're looking at the paracentral regions because we know the malignant patterns, that's where they show up in the paracentral regions. 
So electrodes in central areas may be most important, or um, we just might not need a very um, uh, very many electrodes at all. A very limited electrode array could already give us an idea of whether there is reactivity, whether there is discontinuity, or something that we are looking for in the EEG in a patient who uh, we want to uh, prognosticate. And this brings me back to the simplified montages that I already showed you. Um, and I'm um, now kind of explaining to you that these different montages were used for different types of patients. So the headband montage was actually used in critically ill patients that were comatose and were used for a uh, seizure rule out. We used 10 electrodes, so more electrodes than in the other montages. Um, to get a more granular insight into whether there are pleptiform discharges. And we're focusing on the temporal lobes because that's where seizures occur. In the central montage, we are um, having a good chance of evaluating patients post cardiac arrest because we're focusing on the paracentral areas. And the four electrode or five electrode frontal montage is really good for ECMO patients. You can't move their head um, you have uh, good access to the front of the head, but not the back. Um, and the frontal montage will allow us to understand what's going on in the, brain global, in the brain globally. So this might be a good montage for that. The numbers in the literature certainly bear out that for a global EEG assessment post cardiac arrest or during ECMO, uh, a reduced montage like the ones that I showed you, uh, the one um, reported, by, reported on by Backman with uh, the paracentral setup, and the one reported by Touchard um, with the uh, frontal setup, do show very good sensitivity and specificity. Uh, Backman and Al had uh, three expert readers. The um, sensitivity and specific specificity for all readers are shown here specificity very good and sensitivity also fairly good um, for most readers and for most things burst suppression um, easily detected continuity easily detected and reactivity was a little bit more difficult um, certainly for some readers um, more so than others and then in the um, frontal montage with only the four or five electrodes um, we see still good um, sensitivity and specificity for um, discontinuity and reactivity in these ECMO patients. Herta et al. published a very interesting study in 2017 where they systematically assessed uh, various montages uh, for the detection um, of different types of discharges. And they did so um, while progressively reducing the number of electrodes. So they looked at a um, reduced uh, banana montage, a crown montage, which would be a centrally focused montage, a forehead montage, and a headband montage, which is the temporally focused um, circular montage. And um, they looked at the sensitivity for detecting um, ictal discharges or seizures, uh, rhythmic delta activity, um, periodic discharges, and burst suppression. And they found that with um, progressively reducing the number of electrodes, the sensitivity progressively reduced, uh, quite strikingly so, as you see here for periodic discharges, but also for, um, for seizures um, and to some extent rhythmic delta activity. Um, detection of burst suppression, as we might expect because it's a more global phenomenon, was relatively robust to um, reduction in uh, electrode numbers. At Johns Hopkins, um, we use a, a reduced um, a banana montage, um, a double distance montage as depicted here, um, for patients that have bandages or drains and cannot be evaluated with a full montage. And in 2018, we did our own study where we had two readers evaluate the sensitivity and specificity for seizure activity and status epilepticus. And as you can see that the, uh, the sensitivity for seizure activity for both readers was around 80% um, and the sensitivity for status epilepticus was only around 70%. 
specificity, however, was um, uh, really high. So that means that with a reduced array, you may miss some of the seizure activity that is there, but when you see seizure activity or when you judge to see seizure activity, then obviously the patient is seizing. And I'd like to show you here a few examples um, from our paper. Um, here you can see on a full montage um, in the bigger picture, um, you have a, a, a left temporal chain, right temporal chain, left parasitoidal chain, and right parasitoidal chain, and a few midline electrodes. And you can clearly see that there is a seizure activity, uh, a run of periodic discharges at the minimum, um, in uh, and around T6. Um, as you know, in the critically ill uh, population, particularly when there is brain injury, uh, seizure discharges or epileptiform discharges may not look quite as well formed as they do um, in patients that have normal brains. So we have to be fairly sensitive with our EEG and we want to look granularly our, at our EEG in order to pick up these um, seizures that are not well formed. So what we did in our study was that we just simply remontaged a patient who had been recorded using a, um, a full bipolar montage or a longitudinal montage um, and remontaged it to um, have the patient be uh, displayed, have the EG be displayed as though it was recorded with a reduced montage. And as you can see here for this example, when you omit the, uh, the T6 electrodes, which you would usually see, um, the epileptiform activity completely gets lost. And in this reduced montage, neither reader detected um, that there was actually a run of uh, periodic discharges that looked epileptiform um, going on in this uh, EEG. Here's another example. Again, you see quite a rhythmic discharge, this time in the left frontal area. Um, it's got embedded spikes. It looks potentially concerning and epileptiform. Um, let's see what happens when you remontage from this uh, full longitudinal montage to a reduced montage. And again, you can see that while there are some sharp looking discharges, the rhythmicity of the run is completely lost when you look at this EEG uh, with a reduced montage. So obviously we are happy that we can use reduced montages on patients where setting up a full montage is impossible, um, but we have to understand that there's a caveat particularly for seizure detection. So hopefully in summary, I have shown you that a simplified EEG montage can be helpful um, particularly for the fast assessment of an unconscious patient and for triage to um, figure out whether the patient needs uh, prolonged monitoring potentially with a full montage. It can also be helpful if drains or bandages prevent placement of a full montage or if EEG techs are not available to um, hook up uh, an EEG with a full montage. Reduced EEG arrays, however, can reduce the sensitivity for the detection of seizures, ictal discharges, and periodic discharges. And the sensitivity appears to decline somewhat proportionally to a declining number of electrodes in the array. For the global assessment, um, the sensitivity of a reduced montage um, is better, um, and it is therefore still useful for the assessment of reactivity post cardiac arrest and for prognosis. Specificity um, for a reduced EEG array is often preserved even when um, sensitivity suffers. And with that, I want to remind you again that every EEG is only as good as its montage, and I thank you for your attention.